Hey, this is Scott Nimrod, and I'm going to go ahead and show a little app that I built to replace the existing phone app. This app right here, I, uh, although I like it, it's something that I have issues with in regards to usability and navigating. I mean, but that's just me personally. I, I think it could be done better based on how I would run it, not to say that um, it doesn't work for other people. So as a result, because you know I'm a developer for the Windows platform, I decided I decided to give it a try. So what that actually resulted in was an app where we can actually categorize people. So if you look right now within your contacts phone book, you know the the categories are based on alphabetical or order, or really it's just based on there are, there are no categories. It's just alphabetical order. There's no real context. There's no real grouping or categories or anything like that, which is something that uh, I don't know. I don't like. I I want to have some type of way to to sort people in this contact list based on uh, criteria or categories, because this list results from the People Hub app on Windows Phone 8. Uh, these people are usually categorized as, you know, people from LinkedIn, uh, people from Facebook, people from your your existing uh, email accounts such as Yahoo or Hotmail, etc. But you don't see this context unless maybe you you click on them um, and it may show up. So what I decided to do was build my own app and go ahead and you know deploy it to the store for others to use where we can actually take advantage of grouping contacts uh, within your phone book into a, a structure that makes sense. So specifically, this is the group contacts app. And what we do is we leverage SQLite um, so that we can store and retrieve our uh, contacts based on various categories, such as the friends category, right? We also have family, right, in which we have eight members in there. And we have business. I personally think that those three categories probably is probably gonna make up 90% of, of what the users are gonna fit into or what your contacts are gonna fit into based on these three categories alone. And then by default, I implemented a category called others. So if they don't fall into one of these buckets or one of these uh, categories, then they're they're in this others category. And so when you first uh, launch this app, everybody's in this others group or this others category. And from there, you have the you have the ability to go ahead and move contacts from your others group into another group that makes sense. For example, I don't really know this Akiko Miami. Usually uh, I assign people the last name of Miami based on where, I, or the last name of their city based on where I met them at. So in this case for this Akiko, however you pronounce his name, Miami, uh, I'm not sure if I want to call him a friend because I don't know who this person is. He's definitely not family. And just because I called him Miami, he's probably not business either. I probably met him on the streets. But instead, let's take something that looks more. It's Ashley Gleans. <laughs> I don't even know how to say the name, but we're going to try this person. More than likely, this person is on my LinkedIn contacts. And that's, that's probably the context of where this person came from, why this person is within my phone book. So if we click on that, this person works for, I don't know how to pronounce any of this, Pepperell, Funks, I don't know what this is, and there's just an email address. Well, we can either move this person by holding on to their name um, once we have that person selected, or another way is within your others group and you have a listing of contacts that belong to this category, we can just tap and hold the name again, tap business, and they're removed from others. And within business, the person now shows up here. 
There are some other features on this app that I've built, um, such as emailing directly, right? So you could pick the, I haven't set up my email account yet, but when you tap email, you could go ahead and specify the email client that you want to use. And then from there, you just type in an email message. In addition, um, because we recognize that this person uh, is from a company, that's how they're listed, we can, this is enabled, which means that when we tap this, the company name that's under this context name, that we should be prompted to call this person with the actual phone number, which that works. And that's the work number. Whenever you, you dial or whenever you tap the, the company name, it will automatically map a phone number to the company work number. In addition to that, let's see. here's a case where the company name is disabled. As a result, you can't tap it, but we see where they work at, or at least we see the partial name. So that could be fixed and updated in a later release. And same thing with the email, all right? Now, you're probably asking, well, where's the phone number at? Well, this contact doesn't have a phone number. At least it's not listed. Remember, these contacts come from the People Hub app on your Windows Phone 8. Uh, phone. So as a result, there there may only be partial information, but we know for a fact that nine times out of ten, if we navigate to our family group or a friends group, we we're we're probably going to find the information that we need. We see that phone, the the phone uh, button that's in the bottom app bar is now enabled. We can tap mobile. And this is his mobile phone that we could go ahead and call. We could do message. We could leave him, um, you know, a text message, whatever. Also, a feature that's set up within this app is sorting, or not sorting, but but filtering. So you could do a search for a specific contact. As of right now, the search is only enabled based on the group that you're under. So when I say groups. You notice how the search uh, feature is now disabled or is hidden right now because we haven't selected a group to actually do our search on. If we were to select a group, again, this feature, the search feature is now enabled. You tap it, and then we could start uh, searching for somebody specific in mind. If we want to, I don't know, type in J. We have autocomplete, right? So these are the suggestions based on the, the text that got typed in. And that's the way it works. If we wanted to call, oh, so this should be updated with the phone number. So I'll have to update that part. But if we wanted to call, basically go ahead and you know either tap the call button that's on the app bar or tap mobile or if the work name is enabled as a button we can tap that to call the job same thing with message and notice I just did the navigation by pressing the back button so you can either do navigation or navigate to previous states by tapping the, the various groups and it'll go back to the previous state. You tap it again, business, tap the group again, it returns back to the previous state. Or you could use the, the button that comes with the device, the back button, and it'll perform the same navigation. So I built that in as well. If you just want to make a random phone call, um, in which it, it doesn't necessarily have to do with the context within your list, but you just need to call customer support for whatever reason, I don't know, for your yard or for your mobile carrier and you just need to dial a number, well, you could just go to the bottom app bar, tap the, the phone icon, and you could go ahead and call whoever you want. And that's it.